I'm Allie and this is New Scotland Knots, a podcast all about knitting and everything fiber art related. Welcome back if you're returning and if not, welcome. It's nice to see you. We'll get right into it. I haven't, I left a little bit extra time in between these episodes because I just haven't knit a lot. But they're all, they were also bigger projects um, and I think it might stay that way going forward since I'm not doing as many baby knits that I can show you every week. Um, so we'll start off with works in progress and I don't think I showed you last time but I definitely mentioned it and this is a sweater I'm knitting by Claudia Q from U Knits in Toronto. Um, I think it's called the Lena the Lena and then there's another version that I'm knitting called the Lena Azor and that's this one. So the only difference is the Lena just has the singular eyelets for this eyelet pattern has kind of four in a diamond flower shape. Um, and it has, it's hard to see since it's not blocked, but there's scalloped edging all around the neck as well as the sleeves. Um, this was, I know the pattern was written to go in Lane Magazine 10 before they stopped publications. And then that's why a little while afterwards, units end up, ended up um, releasing the pattern anyways with the two variations. Um, I think it's still free on Ravelry. It might not be. They tend to do weekly um, free patterns and change it up week from week. But... If it's not, it, it might still be there. Um, I will say though, when I was originally planning the Mousse, Mousseau by Espace Tricot, sorry, um, and it's a similar shape, so it does, it's, it kind of look, has like a little bubble sleeve and the waist, so a similar idea, but it's plain. There was no neck details, there was no eyelets. Um, and I thought the yarn, even though it's hand dyed and it looks a little bit um, tonal, I thought, I thought it could get away with a little bit more interest without the yarn hiding the pattern, which is why I decided to go for um, the units pattern instead. And I'm really happy with it. Um, the only modifications I've done so far is increase the length by three inches because I don't like crop tops. And I also did a twisted rib hem instead of just a, one, a regular one by one. And for my bind off I did, um, I think it's called a tubular bind off. I, it's like the Kitchener stitch just binding off. And that's what I did just to make it a little, a little more seamless. Yeah, it's hard to see. Um, but aside from that, everything's gone, gone well. I'm currently working on a sleeve. And this is the other thing. This is um, the first pattern I've read where the sleeves aren't knit um, top down like as part of the sweater you actually do them separately and then Kitchener stitch them together so here's my yarn and here is the sleeve so I'm done this one I'm also doing it a little bit longer than recommended you can see the pretty cuff little scalloping um, and what I'll do is I'll seam it together and then repeat for the other side. So we'll see how this goes. I'm really nervous to do a Kitchener stitch for a sleeve. I've done it with toes. I like the tubular and Kitchener bind off. Like I'm used to the instructions and how you do it. Um, but since it's the first time and I don't want to mess it up and because there's mohair in here, I know it will get tangly if I do have to redo it. So 
I just gotta take my time, sit down and do it all in one, one sitting. But I will show you progress next time. Um, I should also mention, I know I've mentioned this before, the yarn I'm using is from Mineville Wool Project and it is a merino and linen blend. It's hard to get the colors blowing out a little bit. As well as a, this is a mohair and nylon blend held double. So I think I'll finish this a bit too late into the spring season to wear it this year, but I'm hoping even come fall and next spring, um, it'll be appropriate to wear it then because it is, even though there's a little bit of a linen, I don't think there's enough. It's still primarily wool and then mohair. So you get warm and I don't want to get warm and sweaty and then itchy with the mohair, but it will be beautiful once it's done. Um, I will mention, I'll link the dyer. She's from Nova Scotia. Um, but the way her shop updates happen is you can you can buy online. She has her own boutique, and once she sells out, like she sells out, like that's it. And then she'll come up with a new product or color, and same thing. Um, and you can also, and she also wholesales to quite a few um, individually um, independent yarn shops around. I've seen them here in Ontario. I know they're back home in Nova Scotia. So like, so you might not get exactly this color, but she might eventually release something similar to it again. Um, yeah. So that is my work in project, work in progress. And it's technically my only one. Um, my other work in progress is I don't have anything to actually show you of what I've done because it's the baby blanket and the past few weeks I have been working on the Excel templates to try to edit the pattern. Do I have it here? Oh, I don't have it in my project bag. Okay. Um, I think it's the ABC blanket by Knit Picks. If, if it's not, again, everything's below and linked. Um, and it was requested if I could change a couple of the motifs to a dog and a soccer ball. So I worked really hard, um, took a few hours, and what happened was since I have to work in the parameters of how many stitches in, that are in each box and how many rows, and because the pattern is, I'm saying all this because the pattern's free, anybody can get it, um, but it's knit one side, Curl the other, um, and then the the motifs are in garter stitch for the squares, and the way it was spaced with the garter stitch where it would pop out and the motif would would show in that purl stitch, um, it just wasn't quite the right size. It was I had it too long or too short, and then it wasn't proportionate to the other motifs. So I kind of scrapped that. Like I did. I gave it a really good, uh, good chance and played around with it. And I did a, I did a swatch. Um, do I have it? No. Okay. I don't have the swatch. Um, but after I, I did the pattern for each of them, I did a swatch to see if it would work and it just wasn't, it wasn't quite right. Um, so I will stick to the original motifs that were on the blanket, but I was able to easily, um, switch the letters so instead of ABC, they want RAP. And that was really easy since, you know, straight up and down letters. Um, so I'll do that. So that was all the behind the scene work with the project. Um, I do have the yarn ready to go. It's going to be in Cascade 220 Superwash wool. I figured, you know, it's a baby blanket. It should be washed. Um, what color is it? It's a heathered gray. What color? Um, color is 1946. Right here. Nope, it's not gonna zoom. Um, but it is a nice, 
a nice heathered gray, so a good neutral for, for a boy or a girl. So that's my next project. I think what I'm going to do is try to finish the sweater since I only have one sleeve left and the sleeve is really, it's really easy. It's just once you get that cuff down, it's just up and in the round. Um, and then I'll work on the blanket. Now the baby's due, I think the end of this month. Um, but I think aside from the blanket and the stuffy, the little bunny that, that I crocheted, nothing else will be used. So I'm just going to just set a care package and then I think I'll ship it in June. So it might be late for, for the arrival of the baby, but I think they'll still have plenty of time to get good use of everything. So those are my work in progresses. And next up is the cardigan. And I know you know what cardigan I'm talking about because I've talked about it every time and it's been quite the journey. But it's the velvety mohair, the velvety cardigan mohair edition. Um, I forget the designer's name, but here it is. So we are done. Well, I'll do the top button. So last time I think I had it finished. I was just waiting on buttons or it was nearly finished and I was just doing the, the ribbing all the way around the body. So I think after all this time, it turned out really well. Here's the back. Um, you can kind of see the pattern, so thank goodness for that. Now it is, it hits me just at my waist. Um, not not my natural waist, but what you, like your hips, like what you consider your waist, like where a pair of jeans would, would hit. Um, and it does fit. It's, it's a bit more snug than I'd like, but I think with the alpaca, it is going to loosen over time and with wear. And then the sleeves are quite, quite wide as you can see, or a bit like bat wings, but it's cozy. And then I know I can fit another sweater underneath without any issue if, if I'm that cold for some reason. Um, but it is very warm. I've worn it a few times. It has been my go-to sweater since I finished it. Um, I will talk about the buttons. Uh, oh, where are they from? Um, Mad. Mad Squirrel Mud Mudworks. I'll have it written down. Um, but it is a ceramist in Alberta, Canada. And she makes no homemade homemade buttons. And what I did was I bought just you know six. And how I like to do buttons is do one at the top, one at the bottom. And then one right where, like the wide, in the um, widest part of your chest, where you normally get like a gaping hole for, if you, when you do your buttons up. And then from there, I evenly space all the other buttons in between. So there, it looks like it's a little bit close at the top, and then farther apart near the bottom. Um, yeah, so I'm really. I'm really happy I finally finished it. It's been quite the process with gauge not working and thinking it's going to be too small and running out of yarn. I ended up buying extra yarn and I only needed one of the three balls I bought, but I'm sure, you know, it's fuzzy gray yarn. I'll, I'll find another small project to, to make with it. Um, I got the the nice special buttons. Somebody did suggest, I think it was Lisa, who suggested pewter buttons, which I love the idea. I searched high and low on the internet to try to find some, but the ones that I liked were too small. They were, they were about a centimeter or a centimeter and a half, and I needed 2.5 centimeters um, for the size that I wanted. But I'll definitely, remember that for next time because I think 
silver or pewter would just look beautiful with the with the gray and then I also considered wood but I wanted it to be I wanted it to be washable and I was worried if I got wood that over time it, it just wouldn't hold up as much um, if you have any experience using wooden buttons please let me know especially those that aren't um, that don't have a varnish or anything on them like if they're the raw the raw wood so yeah, finished project. This is the only finished project I have to show today, but it's been a long time in the making. I started in January, I finished it in May, and I'm happy it's finally done and I can wear it and stay cozy, throw it on when I'm running out the door, put it on in the house when I'm cold. So it should be a good, uh, very versatile piece that fits into my wardrobe quite easily. Oh, something else I wanted to mention was the other, so when I ordered the buttons, the artist also gave another little one, here, here we go, um, and it's a little bumblebee, how cute is that? So this was just like a little thank you gift for shopping, but I thought it'd be super cute if you had it on like a hat or a button on a wrist or a um a cowl and I could always get some more because she does carry these these in stock and I'll I'll link her SD site so if you want to check it out but yeah I thought that was cute to show um so those are all the projects um they mentioned the button somebody did ask about the from previous video um the Belfast Mini Mills pattern book. So I have that packed away right now, but maybe what I can do is in a couple months, I can take it out and just show you, go flip through the, like the pictures of the patterns, because if you go online, you can order it, but they don't have any, they don't show you the, the patterns that are inside. And if you go on, and they don't have it on Rivalry where you can also see the patterns. So that might be helpful. Um, I just can't get to it right now, but in the future, I'll definitely, definitely try. Um, next up is the yarn. So again, with Belfast Mini Mills, this is their subscription box for April. It's a orangey red, depends who you talk to. <laughs> um, it's uh, the Island Collection, 100% superwash wool, um, two ounce skein, 225 yards, three ply. And they always add a pattern with their subscription box. And here is, do they have another picture? I think this is a cowl a little bit of a lacework cowl. They do show it in one of their episodes in April. I'm pretty sure if you did want to check it out for a closer look, but it looks like a nice little cowl, like just about this, like not too, not too short, but not too tall in, um, in height. So it would be a good like in between seasons. So that's that. Um, and then my other subscription is from as usual the part of the 12 month of sheep um, the long way homestead this is an icelandic single ply it's natural so it hasn't been dyed grown in midland manitoba and it's 165 meters and 100 grams so i'd say like a worsted yeah my, an errand weight um so you can see there's a lot of a lot of debris in it. Um, when it arrived, I was kind of shocked at how just how much dirt and hay and everything was there. And I did try washing it. Didn't really help. Um, so I'm hoping what happens is when I wind it into a ball that some of it will go flying out so I don't have to pick it all out. But it's really nice. It's it's single spun, but it goes like thick and thin over and over again. So I'll add that to the pile and make my big 
breed of the sheep um, month blanket as my tentative plan. We'll see what the other what the other gauge is for the remainder of the of the yarn. Since some are fingering weight, some are worsted, some are iran. Um, but we'll see. So yeah, that's like a solid solid black. There's not there's not really a hint of gray. It's only the the debris that's in it. And these are the last subscriptions I'll get it for a while but I think by the next time I sit down to do a podcast I might have a couple more a couple more to show you um that's it for my subscriptions what else is there we talked about the book I'll try to show you more of those patterns later on um oh I don't know if any of you participated in the online international fiber festival but I did this year and specifically for again my favorite Belfast Mini Mills and they were doing they had a discount code for anybody who participated and they represent they helped represent Atlanta Canada and the Fiber Festival and since that's where I'm from I'm of course just very excited whenever somebody like a small business or company or somebody from out east gets um gets a shout out in that way and gets to show what they have. I think another, I don't know all of the people who were in the Atlantic Canada section, but another one was Sweet Skein of Mine and she's from New Brunswick. Um, but Belfast Mini Mills is in PEI. I just showed you their yarn. I show it all the time with a subscription. <laughs> um, they're, they're probably one of my favorite um, mills, mills and yarn, yarn companies in general. But with the discount, I did get quite a few skeins of yarn, which I already have projects in place for. So I don't have it. I shipped it home to Nova Scotia. So I'll show you that in probably a month or a month or two when I have my hands on it. So I'm really excited to give everything a squish. I got some really special yarn. There was a camel blend, a angora blend blend. Um, I there's a Tweety looking one it's I'm pretty excited I'm excited to get knitting and and to show you guys so that is to come um, I don't think there's anything else today to show you um, you'll probably see a <laughs> You'll probably see in the next podcast in end of June, potentially even July. We'll see. We'll see what happens. It all depends on how much I knit and uh, what the schedule is looking like. But in the meantime, I am going to have a video posted with quarantine knits, um, since, as you may have guessed, with packing up in boxes. Um, we are moving out east, back home, and during, we have to do a mandatory two weeks quarantine during that time. And I need something to knit, I need something to do for, for the two weeks since we won't be able to go out or do anything, um, which I'm very much looking forward to. It'll feel like a little vacation. Um, so I'm going to work on posting a video with kind of the planned projects and then maybe come July we can figure out what actually what actually happened or if I even knit during the two weeks um but I thought that would be fun and then I can show off some yarn and you know we all like yarn and wool so might as well anyway that's it for me for today I hope you have a good a good last the last few weeks of spring that they're good um you're staying safe maybe you're getting the vaccine how exciting um yeah and we'll touch base soon so take care. Um, oh, and before I go, please like and subscribe and ring the bell, especially since my videos do tend to be a little bit more sporadic and not in a, on an exact schedule. And I'll see you around. See ya.